Hi there, welcome to an update on the geologic activity going on in Iceland. Today's January 3rd. It is about 9.40 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, 4.40 p.m. in Iceland. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Thanks for joining me today. Um, so the big news is no eruption yet, uh, but our our attention right now is going to turn a little bit to the east because we had a few moderate earthquakes that occurred earlier today that actually were felt in Reykjavik and in other parts of this peninsula here in Iceland. And so I want to discuss those a little bit and then we'll turn back to the situation closer to uh, Grindavik. And so here's our earthquake data uh, for the last 24 hours. And so you're probably immediately drawn, your attention's drawn to these really big circles in this cluster and swarm of earthquakes that occurred over in this region. This is just east of this large lake here, uh, Klevravatn, and it's also part of a uh, volcanic system, the Krišuvik volcanic system, that is adjacent to or east of the volcanic system we've been focusing on, the Fagradalsfjallt one that occur, that erupted in 2021, 2022, and 2023, um, which may be linked to the recent activity near Grindavik. Uh, I don't know if they're giving these different names, if it's the Svartsengi, named after the power plant, if that's the name of the uh, volcanic system. Uh, but it's all part of the plate boundary. Uh, but we've usually broken these up into systems uh, more or less topographically and based on past eruptive behavior. And you can somewhat see that when you look at images of it on the map view, you can see these different northeast, southwest trending mountain ranges. But nonetheless, so we're looking at an area about uh, 10 miles or 16 kilometers to the northeast of the uh, magma intrusion that we've been focusing on back over here. Um, but just to put some things, maybe hopefully set some folks at ease, um, these quakes do not have any evidence whatsoever that they're related to magma intrusion. So while these quakes are occurring concurrent with the intrusion of magma going on uh, north of Grindavik, there's no evidence to suggest that these quakes are related to intrusion of magma, that the magmas move from one area to another, or therefore that we're going to see any sort of eruption here. That's It's just way too early. Um, the most likely um, synopsis or interpretation of these earthquakes is that these are related to the tectonic stresses in the area. So we've got magma inflation going on in this area and that has introduced new stresses into the region. We have series of faults and fractures which trend, which trend northeast southwest throughout the whole Reykjanes Peninsula and so we're probably seeing some of these moderate earthquakes triggered by those stress conditions. So uh, just again to reiterate uh, just because we're seeing these earthquakes here an eruption here is not at all in, in the uh, in the near future. We're not predicting anything happening here. Uh, it's just a series of uh, tectonic quakes related to the changing stress conditions. So the big one here, the bigger circle is a 4.3 at a depth of about four and a half kilometers. Uh, and then a few maybe minutes or so later, there was a 3.5 at a similar depth, about four kilometers. And then you can see the smaller ones in here ranging from twos on down to ones and even smaller. Uh, there's a magnitude zero, which you probably didn't even think was possible, but it is. Um, so you can see all the different quakes that have happened here. So nothing alarming, although this quake was felt in uh, parts of Reykjavik and the capital city area. So this was felt uh, because it was large enough magnitude by folks, um, but no reports of damage, no uh, cause for alarm in any way shape or form just everything seems to be uh, okay so anyway so let's um, look at a couple other uh, bits of information this is just another way to look at the earthquake a different site the map.ice site is nice so this one shows this is the last 24 hours so again here's a Grindavik down here in the lower left um, and in the last 24 hours you know just not a lot of earthquakes in that area we'll, we'll come back to that in a second we'll come back to the area we've been focusing on, but let's kind of wrap up this little earthquake swarm here. Uh, there's the big lake there, Klevravatn, and the earthquakes in this area here. And you can see the 4.3 there, just shown with a star, 
lots of little dots maybe you can pick out those numbers there they're kind of small a little hard to see I could make those a little bit bigger but it's just showing uh, that data yeah they're still not not awesome there but you can see the big red star here for the 4.3 and then the 3.5 and then I've also put those on uh, my little Google Earth map that I'm kind of keeping track of. So this maybe puts it more in perspective in terms of where everything lines up. So here's Grindavik down here. The yellow line just to the north of it is the berm that they're constructing. We'll come back to that news item here in a bit. Uh, the power plant Blue Lagoon just to the north. The lava field from the December 18th eruption a few weeks ago. A few prominent hills over here that we've been using as topographic markers. The last three eruptions in the region and where they occurred and then this the two I just marked the two big earthquakes here so just you can see it's in a different region um, different system and again there's absolutely no evidence whatsoever that we've had magma move from this area where we know it's occurred because it's erupted um, that it's moved over to this region here so hopefully that maybe set some folks at ease if you were concerned about that but um, was definitely an active day and that's why I wanted to put together an update for today just because I thought there was um, some things going on that folks might might find interesting. The Met Office did put out an update related to these earthquakes that came out today. Um, 4.5 uh, that was adjusted later down to a 4.3 so this this was sort of the preliminary magnitude. Um, yeah so 10.50 a.m. and the name of this place here I worked on my pronunciation is Tresladinja. So hopefully I got that right. Amanda Joe helped me out with that. So that's just one of the prominent topographic uh, mountains or hills in that area. And then, yeah, another 3.9. And then there's just been the numerous aftershocks. So we're going to expect to have more earthquakes in that region because you had these two magnitude four, nearly four earthquakes. And so I'd expect to see more earthquakes occurring in that area, at least over the next day or two. And then they should dissipate quite a bit. Um, Earthquakes occur at a depth of five kilometers and are most likely so-called thrust earthquakes, which are a reaction to the release of tension due to earthquakes on the Reykjanes Peninsula. That statement there might be a little bit of language translation because when we think about thrust faults and thrust fault earthquakes, we're talking about reverse faults caused by compression. So two sides of the fault, one's moving over the top of the other one. Um, and most of the Reykjanes Peninsula is dominated by what we would call normal faults or extensional faults where the, where the, the dominant stress is extension or stretching. Um, and so not quite sure, you know, I think that's probably just a little translation glitch. But the idea here is they're, they're saying what I just stated in that it's just releasing regional stress on the peninsula. This peninsula has been had a lot of activity over the last three years. And uh, just because we're getting a little cluster of earthquakes at the same time we have an intrusion of magma doesn't mean that they're necessarily related. We just have a region of geologic unrest and lots of activity taking place. So, um, okay. And then, yeah, and this made the news a little bit. Um, but again, no reports of damage. In fact, you know, you'd be hard pressed going into the Iceland news sites a few minutes ago like I just did. I had to dig a little bit to even find... Um, a story on it so it, it's not a big deal to folks in Iceland in the capital city area who are used to these moderate sized earthquakes from time to time. So let's turn our attention then back to the area of focus. It's been a couple of days since I did an update. I think it was December 31st so uh, Happy New Year first of all uh, and let's focus back over in this region here and see what's been transpiring geologically over the last three or four days and let's turn first to our well let's look at the earthquake data because we kind of we jumped at the the big yellow circles there but now let's focus on the area where this magma body is known to exist in the subsurface and again over the last 24 hours you can see these are very small quakes 1.8 we're probably only looking there at uh, maybe 15 or so quakes in the last 24 hours in this region uh, so not a lot of activity uh, the earthquakes have definitely slowed down considerably if we look at the GPS data and, a fo and again we'll focus on the Svartsengi GPS station which has been the main station we've been tracking uh, again the main graph we're going to 
look at here's this bottom one which shows uplift of this station so again quick review here's late October into November uh, uplift occurring and then the big swarm of earthquakes and the magma body or part of the magma chamber pushed into a new zone to the east forming a, a dike a vertical conduit of magma so that's illustrated here by this pronounced downdrop of the elevation near the power plant and then over the course of the rest of November uh, we have this steady uplift and rise of the land which is interpreted to be inflation of the magma chamber so it's kind of rising and inflating like balloon or uh, bread crust rising if you will a few gaps in the data when we had really bad weather and the probably the data points were unreliable so they were tossed out probably these anomalous ones um, you know maybe those aren't uh, legit either but then the next big trend here was the drop on December 18th when we had the eruption so that's the eruption moving some of that magma to the surface um, and so that's a drop in the elevation around that time and then since that time through the end of December and into early January we've been seeing this fairly slow but steady rise in the elevation but notice our last little cluster of data points here um, that might be too zoomed in uh, do, 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 do. here we go right here notice that they're they're flattening out a little bit um, and so the the slope that you see here is not what we've seen the last week or so um, you know, up and down a little bit of error in the measurements and so the red dots just placed in the the midpoint there um, but overall a definite decrease in terms of the the, the slope there of the data point so the the point there is that it seems that the rise in elevation at least at this gps station has slowed or stalled possibly completely stopped completely um, and there's different ways to interpret that if we assume that the magma influx is constant if there's still magma being pushed into the subsurface but the land above it can't expand or rise anymore because it's already at its um, capacity if you will or uh, that critical threshold then what's happening is we're increasing the subsurface pressure we've got these dissolved gases in the magma uh, and those gases are providing the upward buoyancy uh, that is trying to break through somehow or in some location uh, so that would be probably the most likely interpretation of, of the data there the other interpretation I suppose could be that well it's just stopped right the amount of magma moving into the subsurface has just stopped uh, and that's possible, but given what we've seen over the last several months, I, I would guess that's less likely um, that we would assume the probably the safer assumption is magma influx is continuing, but the ground above it is no longer able to deform because it's deformed as much as it can. And so now we're just building pressure from within. And at some point, that's obviously got to give. We've got to reach some critical point where the strength of the rocks above this pressurized magma chamber um, isn't sufficient to hold that pressurized magma and then that will break through to the surface and will get an eruption so that's that's where we stand right now um, and then some of the local news articles sort of point to this as well this was from yesterday so increased magma pressure and increased likelihood of eruption um, let's see anything we can glean from this news article uh, yeah they talk about the number of earthquakes um, most likely a place would be in the same place we saw or near the same place we saw the last one so uh, similar situation there um, yeah so that's kind of where we're at we're still very much in a wait and see mode with this possible impending eruption um, and so we'd expect it to be somewhere in this region in here based on everything we're seeing um, but it wouldn't be surprising if it was further to the north uh, it wouldn't be surprising if it was further to the south although that would be bad news uh, for the town uh, and it's possible but less likely that something breaks somewhere else you know something over here by the power plant or maybe further to the east uh, who knows but that's kind of where we're at so we'll kind of we're definitely in a wait and see mode and just continuing to monitor the data and waiting to see what may transpire so the last thing I want to turn to in finishing up is a little bit of news then so we talked about the uh, berm or the wall if you will built around the town 
um, that that was that was scheduled that was planned and work has begun on that so after the New Year's holiday they have been working on that I think there's still a few little things are they're finishing up with the the berm or the wall around the power plant area so as soon as they finish that they'll be able to devote all their machines and staffing to the Grindavik berm and so there are some uh, news stories on that so Grindavik begins barrier construction so they've started it they started it yesterday um, and they're going to work around the clock and try to get it done as quick as they can because they know time is of the essence um, I'll put, make sure I link these articles in the video description here so if you want to read them you can um, but they're just pouring out material nearby and then building up I think they're going to start with like three to five meters um, maybe like a three meter tall berm and then they'll raise that up as they as they go um, yeah and then yeah earlier the the live from Iceland webcams actually had zoomed in on some of the workers down in the city but now they've just switched back to their um, some of the primary webcams of interest there and you can see these ones shaking but that's not an earthquake that's the wind you can see the big windy label right there just to keep people um, from being too concerned because when there is calm weather and an earthquake the webcams do shake uh, but if you watch this one here I mean it's shaking almost continuously uh, which would not be what you would expect in the event of an earthquake. So um, that's pretty much all I have for today. We'll kind of keep tabs on this as we go forward. Um, just on a personal note here, I start back up here at the college uh, on Monday. And so I'll try to keep juggling this, uh, you know, my my college responsibilities with maintaining uh, uh, updates and providing you with some information because I, I find a lot of pleasure in doing it and I know it's it's a it's a service a lot of people enjoy so I'll try to keep doing that as best I can but on the off chance that the volcano erupts at 9 a.m. my time when I'm in the middle in the middle of a class and I have another class at 11 uh, there may be some little delay there but I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can if something big occurs uh, otherwise just look for these updates when again I think I feel there's something to point out so um, last thing real quick is I want to give a shout out to uh, a special viewer, a seven-year-old girl named Carolyn, who lives in Buffalo, New York, has been watching these updates with her mom, is super into volcanoes right now, which is awesome. And so I just want her to, I just want to say hi to her, thank her for watching and recognize her diligence and learning about volcanoes and finding this interesting. And yeah, just thank her for watching and learning with me and with the rest of you. So with that, I'll go ahead and sign off. Take care, be well, and we'll see you next time.